Good day, grade 12s. Welcome to another exciting session of mathematical literacy. My name is Nikki Wezulu, and I'm going to be your presenter for today. And today's lesson will be based on the topic of maps, plans, and other representation of the physical world. And the main focus for today's session would be on maps and scales. And now under the topic of maps and scales, we are going to focus mainly on the concept of scale, the concept of maps, the grid reference, and the compass direction. Maps and scales. Our lesson objectives for today, by the end of this lesson, we should be able to work with different types of maps. We should be able to calculate the actual length or distance on the map using the bar scale or the number scale. We should be able to use the given map and the compass direction to find the way to a destination. And lastly, we should be able to determine the scale in which a map has been drawn in. And then using the, the scale in the form one is to something. And also using the scale to determine other dimensions of the map, like your actual distance or the map distance. Now, before we can go into the section of maps and scales, we must first discuss the terminology that we are going to come across as we are working with this topic in order for all of us to be on the same page. The first word that we are going to come across is your maps. What is a map? A map is a diagrammatic representation of an area of land or sea showing physical features. And now take note that a map does not only represent large areas, but you can also have a map of small areas. You can have a map of a school, you can have a map of your street, you can have a map of a town, a province, or a country. A map does not always mean a small area, but it can also represent large areas. And then the distance as the crow flies. This one we normally see in the exams, when the examiner says calculate the actual distance as the crow flies. What does that mean? That means the measured straight line distance from one place to the other. You measure that, that distance on a straight line. That is what is meant by the distance as the crow flies. We have the actual distance, which is the real distance between any two points or any two places on a map. And it is normally calculated in kilometers or depending on the instruction from the exam paper. And then we have a map distance, which is the distance between any two points. The other books will say it's a map distance. Others will say it's the distance on the paper or the distance on the photograph. All those, they mean the same thing. It is the distance between any two points on a map or a, a plane. So these are the different terminologies that we are going to come across as we are dealing with the section of maps and scales. Now, the types of maps that we are going to work with, we'll be working with your street map, your national road map, your provincial road maps, the strip route map, the distance map, and lastly, the elevation map. The first map, which is a street map, a street map gives an in-depth view of the city. It shows the streets, the scale, and sometimes it shows the grid reference. The example that we are having today, it is an example of a street map. It is a street map because it shows the different streets in a certain town. And then this special type of a map also has the grid references. Now, how does the grid reference work? The possible questions that they can ask in the exam, they can ask you, in which grid block will you find Bongweni? There is Bongweni, so what is the grid reference for Bongweni? It is in D1. That is where you will find Bongweni. And then please also take note that when you locate the, the, the place on, the, on this type of a map, we are not lo looking for the wedding, but we are looking for the position, the point. If you take, for example, this one, this is the Kokstad Golf Course. The writing is golf, uh, Kokstad Golf Course, but then the position, the point, the sign that is used there is the golf sign. So if you are locating this position, you are looking at that symbol to locate your position. And then if maybe you were asked to locate where is Kokstad, then you will say that Kokstad is in B2. 
two. I'm mentioning the ones that are visible so that all of us are on the same page, you understand. And then the golf, uh, the Coxstad golf course would be in A, A1. That is how you answer a question if you have to give a great reference of a, a position. And then the national road maps, they connect major cities and it is a class of major roads and, and freeways. So your national uh, road map will show all the different provinces in the country. And then sometimes it can even show the neighboring countries. And then the most important thing that you'll take note of on your national map is that it also indicates all the freeways, your national roads. And we know that they are national roads because they're indicated by the ends. Your N1, your N2, your N14, N7, all those are your national roads and they will always appear on your national road. And so, um, other things that you can look for on your national road are the scale, the type of a scale that is used on that particular map. And in this example, we are working with a bus scale. And then also the compass direction. We are giving the compass direction and there's an arrow indicating showing that if you are facing up, then that is the, the north direction. So if you are working with this type of a map, there are a type of questions that you can expect in the exam. The examiner can ask you to use the scale that is given on the map to determine the actual distance from Johannesburg to, to Bloemfontein. So you will note that on this question, you are not given any values, you're not given any dimensions. So then now, that is where you need to use your ruler to look for the positions, between, they say the one, the actual distance from Johannesburg to, to Bloemfontein. So you are going to take your ruler and measure the distance from Johannesburg to, to Bloemfontein. And then you will use that measured distance together with your bus scale to get the actual distance from the two cities. And then remember when you measure again, you do not measure where it is written Bloemfontein, but you measure at the point, the position of Bloemfontein, you measure at the point, the position of Johannesburg. And then we have a provincial road map. This type of a map indicates roads and towns that are found within a province. Uh, normally, this, um, this type of a map, it will be indicating one province, but sometimes you can find a provincial map that shows two provinces. And the example that we're working with today, it is the map of free state. It is the map of free state, but then it is also showing the neighboring provinces. As you can see, your Northwest, your Mpumalanga, uh, your KwaZulu Natal, and the Northern Cape. But the main focus is in the province of the free state. And then this particular map, does not have a, a scale. But that does not mean that a provincial map will never have a scale. Sometimes in the exam, you will get a provincial map with a scale. So if you get a provincial map like this without a scale, you, might, you, you should actually expect the examiner to ask you to determine the scale for this map. So that is one of the questions that you can expect. You can be asked to determine the scale of this map. The other thing that we can note again is that there are national roads that are passing in this province. Remember the national roads are connecting different provinces. So one of the features again of a provincial map is that you will also find the national roads. You can even find your regional roads, your, your R59, your R82. Those are the major roads that are also within the, the province. And then the other thing that we can see is that there's a compass direction for this map. And then this one is also straightforward. There's an arrow facing up to indicate that if you are facing up, then you are moving towards the, the north direction. The uh, possible exam questions that you can expect, they can ask you, what is the general direction of Hilbron from fixed back? From fixed back, it means if you are positioned in fixed back, if you are in fixed back, then what would be the general direction of of Hilbron. So this one is quite a straightforward example. If you are in fixed back, there is Hilbron just moving up. So it means here the answer would be from fixed back, the general direction of Hilbron would be the north direction. I hope it's clear we understand. And then we have a strip chart. This is one, uh, one map that most of the learners are not doing well in. And this is the map that we start doing actually in grade 11. So in grade 10, you did not see it. When you get to grade 11, that is where you start seeing a strip chart. It is drawn vertically on a page 
and it shows distances on a national road between the cities. This example that we are working with today, it is a strip chart from Harry Smith to East London. So now if you look at this map, the distance here at the bottom from East London up to up to Harry Smith, the distance here on a straight line, it is 662 kilometers. That is the distance from East London to, to Harry Smith. And then if you want the distance from East London to Queenstown, the distance from East London to Queenstown is 203 kilometers. If maybe you wanted the distance from Queenstown to Aliwal North, then you're going to have to take the difference to say, okay, the distance from Aliwal North is 341. The distance from Queenstown is 203. So if I want the distance between these two towns, you will take 341 minus 203. And then the answer that you get, that would be the distance from Aliwal North to, to Queenstown. And then a possible exam question, they can ask you to calculate the travel distance from Bloemfontein to, to Clarence. This one is not very straightforward. Look, where is Bloemfontein? There is your Bloemfontein. And where is Clarence? There is Clarence. So how do you answer this one? We want the distance from, from Bloom to, to Clarence. So you are going to start here. From Bloom to Clarence, it, what this tells us is that it means on this map, you don't have a route that travels from Bloemfontein to Clarence straight away. So you, you are going to check your distance from Bloemfontein to Lady Brand. It is 144. So you'll say 144 plus from Lady Brand to Fixbeck. The distance is 71 plus 71 plus from Fixbeck to Clarence. It is 90. So you are going to add these three distances. Remember, we said you want the distance from Bloemfontein to, to Clarence. And then you take your calculator. Remember, as a math lead learner, your calculator is your best friend. Then you are going to take 144 plus 71 plus it is 90. Sorry about that. About this, it is 90 plus 90, which is equal to. And you make sure that you punch in the correct numbers. It is 3. 05 kilometers. That is the distance from Bloemfontein to, to Clarence. I hope this makes sense. I hope now you understand how to interpret and work with this type of a, a chart. And then we have a distance map, which is also called a distance table. A distance map provides actual distances between the main towns the cities and the countries. If you look at this map, if we can quickly analyze this map, it is actually a very easy map to work with. But the most important thing is that you need to make sure that you first read your table, understand it, analyze it, and then you can go and try to answer the, the questions. Because it's not going to help for you to rush to the questions when you did not understand your table. How does this table work? It means here, yeah, if you are traveling from Bloemfontein to Cape Town, Bloemfontein and Cape Town, they meet here. So it means your distance in kilometers from Bloom to Cape Town, it is 1,040 kilometers. And if you want the distance, let's say from George to, to Bloemfontein, it you use your ruler, yes, the usage of ruler is very, very important. You want the distance from George to Bloemfontein, it is 232 kilometers. But let's say you wanted the distance from George to Durban. So from George to Durban, they meet there. The distance is 1,165 kilometers. Let's look at the last example. If maybe you wanted the distance from Port Elizabeth to Nelspreet. This is Port Elizabeth and this is Nelspreet. So the distance between Port Elizabeth and Nelspreet would be 1,000 595 kilometers. And now let's look at the possible exam questions uh, that may be the questions that may be asked in the exam. The examiner can ask you to calculate the distance from Johannesburg to Kimberley via Bloemfontein. So this one is not a straightforward question. You must calculate the distance from Johannesburg to Kimberley, but then you need to via 
Bloemfontein. So where do you start? Uh, you are going to start with Johannesburg. You check your map, you say from Johannesburg to Bloemfontein. You are first going to say, okay, from Johannesburg to Bloemfontein. What is the distance? So from this is my Johannesburg there, and then where is my Bloemfontein? There is Bloemfontein. So Johannesburg to Bloemfontein, the distance is 407 kilometers. So it is 407 kilometers. And then from Bloemfontein to Kimberley, from Bloemfontein to Kimberley, the distance from Bloom to Kimberley, it is 162 kilometers. So you will say, okay, let me just say, from Bloom to Kimberley, we say the distance from Bloemfontein to Kimberley, it is 162 kilometers. Then you take the two distances, you add them together. You say 407 plus 162 equals to, again, your best friend, your calculator. You take your calculator, you say 407 plus 162 equals to 569 kilometers. So this would be 569 kilometers. Meters. So this is the distance from Johannesburg to Kimberley if you are going to via Bloemfontein. Via Bloemfontein means that you are not traveling from Joburg to Kimberley straight. You are traveling from Joburg, you pass Bloemfontein, maybe to go and drop off something. Then from Bloemfontein, you can continue a journey to, to Kimberley. That is your distance table. I hope you understand it. And then we have an elevation map. Elevation map represents the height above the sea level at different locations. And it will show the inclines, the declines, and the distances may also be shown. Now, this type of a map is used mostly by the athletes, especially if they are practicing for, for major tournaments like your, your Comrades Marathon. As you can see on this example of the profile map, it can... Um, guys, take note that it is called an elevation map, but some books may say it's a profile map. So both of the terminologies are correct. And then it indicates the different, um, the different slopes. As you can see, it's not, a, it's not a flat surface. So this is where the runners will be running. If you look here and then on the, your horizontal axis, it is showing your distance in kilometers from 10, 20, up until 87 kilometers. And then the height in meters, you have your highest point. That is the highest point is actually 810 meters. And then you have your, 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 your steps are also named. You have the Polishots, Little Mbujeni, you have Umlas Road, you have Drummond. And then on Drummond, it's written Drummond 1130 cut off. What does that mean? It means if we are starting the race, and then after half past 11, if you have not reached Drummond at half past 11, then you are not going to be able to continue with the race. That is the cut off. So when you are participating in this marathon, you need to make sure that you reach Drummond by 11.30. Otherwise, you are going to be cut off and you will no longer be part of the, of the race. So the possible exam questions uh, that may be asked, they can ask you to, this is one of the questions that they can ask. Will an athlete be running uphill or downhill if he was running from Umlas Road to, to Kemper Down? Now, let's look at our map. Where is Umlas Road? There is Umlas Road. And then where is Kemper Down? This is Kemper Down. So between these two places, will the athlete be running uphill or downhill? I think we can all see that from Umlas, it is going down. Therefore, the, the athlete would be running in a, in a downhill. So this is just an example of the questions that you can expect from a question like this, from a, from a map like this. Sorry about that. And then um, we've discussed all the different types of maps that we, we, are going, we are working with. We also have the compass direction. The compass direction assists us when we are giving directions. Because when we are working with maps, you will definitely be expected to give directions to a certain place. So these compass directions are important because they assist us in giving directions. And then, guys, please take note that you, okay, first of all, you need to know your basics. You need to know your compass direction. And it is, um, 
It is so unfortunate when we are making the exam, you find that a lot of learners are getting this question wrong where they have to give the compass direction. Instead of north, they will say it is south. Instead of east, they will say it is west. So it shows that our learners lack the basic when it comes to giving compass direction. So what I normally use to assist my learners, I, ask the, I, I, I normally tell them to use the acronym NEWS. So if it is your news, this is how you write your news. It is N for North, E, W, and S. So this is where your news is coming from. So if you've got this, you cannot go wrong. And then you know if this is your North, this is your East, then this is your North, East, and then this becomes your South, East, this is your South, West, and lastly, this becomes your, your North, West. Um, guys, please take note that we do not have east south. It must be southeast. It is southwest. It is northwest, not west north. That is also another mistake that is committed by learners in the exams. And then again, uh, in paper two, remember paper two, they can ask you unfamiliar context. In paper two, you might get a compass direction, and then they say, they give you an arrow, and they say, this is there, the north. You do not panic in the exam room and say, no, but north is not supposed to be pointing that side. No. If they say this is the north, then you work with this north. What you have to do, you just have to complete your compass direction to say, OK, if that is the north, then it means this is the south, and then this is the east, and then this is the, the west. And then you work with this compass direction that is, that is given to you. So you can expect this type of a compass in 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 paper two. Sometimes they will give you an arrow pointing down and say this is your this is your north. You don't fix it. You where if the pointing down is a north, then it means move, moving up would be your south, and then your west and your east will also swap places. I hope this is clear. And then the following words again can be used to describe the relative the relative positions. If maybe they're asking you to give a position of something to something, you can use your words like your left, your right, opposite, next to, straight, up, past. You can even use your north, your east, your west, and your, and your south. And then the other important thing, guys, when you are asked to give the directions to us from point A to point B, try to use your bullets as you're answering that question, and then make sure that you mention the important buildings, the important streets, the important um, towns that you're going to pass. If it's a, you have your national roads, do indicate your national roads, but most importantly, try to be as brief as possible. Avoid writing in paragraphs in long essays, please. So that is your, your compass direction. And then we can start with our activity. This activity was adapted from the National Senior Certificate paper 2018. It's paper one and from question four. 1.1, a park run is a weekly five kilometer run. A group of runners drove from Uppington to Springbok to take part in the weekly park run in Springbok. Use the route map that is attached to answer the questions that follow. Before we can go to the questions, let us look at our map that we are going to work with. They said we, are, we must use the, the route map. So let us check for our map. This is the map that we are going to be working with. Now, if you can see this, we actually have two maps here. We have a street map. We also have a, a route map. But the instruction was very clear that we must use the route map to answer those questions. So our main focus is going to be on this map of the root map. Let us quickly analyze our map. We know that these people are traveling as a group of runners. They're traveling from Uppington to, to Springbok. Yes, we can see those two places. And we have a compass direction. They're all facing up, indicating that up is your north. And then the other important aspect on this map, again, we have the scale. The scale is given is one is two. 3,007,874. That is the type of a scale that we are given to use to work with this map. Now that we've analyzed our map, let us go back to the questions. Now, 1.1a, please excuse the numbering. 1.1a, give the general direction from Uppington to, to Springbok. Let us look at our map. 
they want the general direction from Uppington to, to Springbok. So it means this is your position. You are in Uppington. And when you're in Uppington, you're going to draw a compass here. This is your center, your position. So you draw your compass. This is your north. This is your east. This is your west. And this is your, your south. And then if you're in Uppington, where is Springbok? There is your, there is is Springbok. So it means now the general direction for Springbok would be what would be? The general direction of Springbok would be south, southwest. Southwest is the correct answer. Let us look at the second question. The second question, I'll make it be, write down the name of the national park that is close to Gamin Skron. Let's go to Gamin Skron. Uh, looking at our map, there is Kamiskron. Can we see any national park there? We have the Falpers, we have Namakwa National Park. That is the only national park that is around this, this area. So it means the correct answer there it is Namakwa National Park. It is Namakwa National Park. And then moving on to the next question. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, C, that would be our C, guys. Name two towns the runners will pass through on their way to Springbok following the N14. Guys, um, this type of a question, a lot of learners could make a mistake when the instruction says name two towns. I think maybe it's because the person is unsure when they're in the exam or I don't know what would be happening. And then a person goes and gives three towns. If the instruction says you name two, you name two. Naming an extra one will not earn you extra points. So you need to make sure that when they say you name two, you name two. Because if you give an extra one, then you are going to be penalized because then you did not follow the instructions. So please be careful. When they say you name one, you give one. When they say name two, you name two. You don't name an extra one that was not asked because you stand a chance to lose, to lose your mark. So we need to name the two towns that the runners will pass through on their way to Springbok following the, the N14. Let us look at the... So the runners are running from Uppington. They are using the N14. Here is the N14. So the first time that they're going to pass it is Gamus. The first town is Gamus. And then the second town will be what the second town is. Ne immediately next to Gamus, it is Gagamas. The instructions only said two, so you only give two answers. And then D, identify the type of scale that is used on this map. Remember, we have two types of scales, guys. We have a number scale, which is also called a ratio scale. We also have a bar scale. Remember, a bar scale is like a picture scale. And then a number scale, you use the numbers. It can be one is two, something. So let us look at our map and decide the type of a scale that is used here. Here is the scale. It is one is two, something. So is this a bar or a number scale? I think we can all agree that this is a, a number scale. So just for identifying your scale, you get your two marks there. This is a number, a number scale. And then E, I, this would be my E. Use the given scale to determine the actual distance to the nearest kilometer between Uppington and, and Springbok. Take note on this question. You are not given any dimensions, but they want you to determine the actual distance between the two places. So this is where your usage of ruler comes in. Guys, you can never ever afford to go into the exam room without a ruler because you will not be able to answer some of the questions in this section if you do not have your ruler with. So we are going to go back to our map. And we are going to go to our map. Okay, sorry. And then we need to calculate the distance between Uppington and 
and Springbok. So I'm going to use my millimeter side because my millimeters are more reliable. And remember, we don't measure on the, on the name, we measure from the position. So from, from Springbok to, to Uppington, I measured 240 millimeters. So it is 240 millimeters. And then I have the scale. The scale that is given to me, it is one, is two, three million, and 7,874. Just a quick recap. Remember when you are given a, a scale like this, the first unit always, this first unit always represents the, the map distance. And then this other unit always represents the, the actual distance. So this 240 millimeters that we determined, we got it by, by measuring. So it means the 240 millimeters, it is our, our map distance. So I'm going to write the 240 under the one here to say, okay, my measured distance is 240 millimeters. So now I'm looking for my, my actual distance. I'm looking for my actual distance. So to get my actual distance, I'm going to say my actual distance it's equals to the 240 multiplied by 3 million 7,874. This is a big number. You cannot just do this sum in your head. So you need your, your best friend again, your calculator. You say 240 multiplied by 3 million and 7,000. 74. And then please be careful, guys, because we are working with a big number. Check and make sure that you've punched in all the answers correctly. And then we have a big number. It is 721,889,700. million eight hundred and eighty nine thousand seven hundred and sixty. But remember, this is in millimeters. And what was the instruction? The instruction was that we need to give our answer in kilometers. And then this takes you back again to your term one content of conversions, where we are converting the different length. So you need to convert from millimeters to, to kilometers. So by now, grade 12s, you should be knowing the conversion factor between millimeters and kilometers. You should know that a millimeter is a smaller unit. When you convert a smaller unit to a larger unit, such as a kilometer, then you are going to, to divide. And then what is the division factor? The division factor is a, a million. So please, the conversion factor for me between millimeters and kilometers is a, a million. So you are going to take your 721 million and then divide it by 1 million. Make sure that you punch in all the zeros. The answer would be 721,889,76 kilometers. And what was the instruction again, guys? Let's quickly look at the answer, see if we've answered the question. They said, um, sorry, we were asked to calculate the distance to the nearest kilometer. When they say to the nearest kilometer, it means they don't want your answer as a decimal, but they want it as a whole number. So 721.88976, when we round it as a decimal number, because it's an eight here and eight is more than four, we are going to round up. So now our distance would be 722 kilometers. That is the distance between the two places in kilometers. And then let's continue with our activity. Uh, 1.2, it's still a continuation of the previous, uh, of the, the previous activity that we've been doing. On arrival in Springbok, the runners must first pick up Joe. Joe is a fellow runner before heading to Park Run B. Use the street map on the next slide to answer the questions that follow. Remember for 1.1, we're using that other map and now for this map, our main focus is going to be on the, on the street map. Let us quickly look at our street map and analyze it. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, we have the, the two maps, the root map. Now we are done with the root map. We are going to focus on our, our street map. Let's quickly analyze our street map. 
We can see that it's a street map from the N14. When you join this area, you are going to join it using the street, the, the four tracker. And then we have a B there with a symbol. What does the symbol mean? There is a key. It means that that is the depth lodge. So that is our street map. That is the only information that we have on that particular map. We don't have the scale for that type of a, of a map. So let's look at the questions that are following. 1.2a. 1.2a, name the road by which they will enter Springbok. So if these people are running, if these people are traveling from this place for using the N14, and they are entering Springbok. When they enter Springbok, they are going to enter using this street. So what is the, this is Springbok. The arrow indicates that they were entering Springbok. So as they enter Springbok, that is the street that they are using. The name of the street is, it's Four Tracker. So the answer is Four Tracker. Or Four Tracker Road. That is the name of the street that they will be using. And then the second question, Joe gives them the following directions to his home. Um, girls and boys, once again, when you are going to answer this question, it's very important that you have your highlighter on because when you use your highlighter, it's going to be easier and quicker for you to get to the answer. So now this person is giving the directions. It's more like they're giving instructions. So we need to follow those instructions. So if you have your highlighter on, it becomes very, very easy. So it says, enter Springbok from Uppington. Let's go to our map. So enter Springbok from Uppington. So this is how you enter Springbok. This is how you enter Springbok from Uppington. Let's see the next instruction. And then turn right into 8 Span Street. Let's go back and see where is 8 Span Street. Or oh, there is 8 Span Street. It means we are still running. And then on 8 Span, we turn right. This is right. Let's see the next instruction. Turn left into Lukov Street. Let's see where is Lukov. This is Lukov. And they say on Lukov we must turn left. You see how easy it is when you are using a highlighter. Let's see the last instruction. And then lastly, turn left into the first street. So if I'm on Lukov, what is the first street that I come across? It is Refill. And they said I must turn left on that, on that, uh, that street. So I'm going to turn left here. So I turn left on on Refill Street. Now let's see the question. We followed the instructions. Let us see the question now. Now the question is, use the direction above to determine in which street Joe lives. So in which street does Joe live? We've already determined the answer. He lives in Refill Street. So the answer is Re Refill, Refill Street. And then we are still continuing with activity 1.2. Name the lodge near the park run. So we need to go back to our map and identify the lodge that is there at the park run. So this is the park run map. There's only one lodge there. And the name of the lodge is, it's Debs Lodge. That is C, and then D. The distance from Joe's house to the park run is 2,34 kilometers. You write down what is given to you, that the distance is 2,34 kilometers. They travel at an average speed of 40 kilometers per hour. So your speed is given there. Your average speed is 40 kilometers per hour. Determine how long it will take them in minutes to get from Joe's house to the, to the park run. Well, immediately when they say how long, they're talking about time. It means they want us to calculate time and our time must be in, in minutes. So they've already given us the formula. We are given the formula. So this one is nice and straightforward. The formula that is given to us there, this time is equals to distance over over speed and then guys we have our distance what is our distance that is given to us it is 2 comma 3 4 
divided by what is our speed? It is 40 kilometers, but it is 40 kilometers per, per hour. And then our distance was in kilo, kilometers. I hope we can all see here. So now we want the time. So time would be equals to, you take your calculator again, you say 2,34 divided by, by 40 kilometers, which is equals to 0, comma, sorry, T is equals to 0, comma, oh my goodness, 0, 5, 8, 5. I'm sorry, now it erased this one. This was my, dis my, my speed, which was 40 kilometers per hour. And then, but now my time here is in hours. Remember, my speed is in kilometers per hour. Let me just uh, use this just for neatness purposes. My, my, my speed is 40 kilometers per, per hour. It means now the kilometers and the kilometers are going to cancel. So now our answer is 0, 0,0585 hours. But what was the instruction? The instruction was that we need to calculate the time in in minutes. So how do we move, how do we convert guys from hours to minutes? It's 0, 0,0585. So we're from hours to minutes. We are moving from a larger unit to a smaller unit. Again, the concept of conversions that we've already done in term one, we multiply by, by 60, which is going to give us how much? So you say the answer that you got there, multiplied by 16, what is the answer? It is three, comma, five, one minutes. That is the answer that you are, we are looking for. So we are happy because our answer is given in, in minutes. And then you get your, your two marks. So we've come to the end of activity one, but before we can go to activity two, I just want to clarify something quickly. Yes, on this question, I think it's E, let me just go and revisit my solution there. Yes, we are calculating the distance, the actual distance in kilometers between Uppington and, and Springbok. Remember, these people are running. So for us to calculate a distance and get a distance of 722 kilometers, it does not make sense in reality. This is not possible for people to run this distance from one point two to the other. The reason why our answer is so out of the ordinary, it is because our map has been enlarged and we are working with a number scale. So the most important thing here, learners, that I want you to take, it is the, the concept of the method. The most important thing, it is the principle and the method that you have to use for you to get to the answer. It's not really about the correct or the wrong answer. According to these calculations and everything, the answer is correct, 100% correct. Just an issue of the resizing. The map has been resized. The scale also is, um, the, the, the number scale that we are working with, it is also affected. Hence, we are getting such a large number of 722 kilometers. I hope this is clear. Now, moving on to activity number two. We are done with activity one. Activity two, the University of Limpopo students are undertaking a trip from Polokwani to Middleback for in-service training. They have hired a bus from Mai's luxury bus company. Professor Dutoy and Dr. Nkomo are academic organizers for this in-service training. Use the map that is attached to answer the questions that follow. So let us first look at our map before we can answer the questions. Yes, there is the map that we have. Uh, our map is actually, a ma it's actually a provincial map because it's not showing all the provinces in the country. The highlights, I see Limpopo then, I also see Mpumalanga, and then just some few parts of the Free State, few parts of KZN. But the major provinces that are appearing here is Mpumalanga and, and Limpopo. And the other feature that we can see on this map is the, the compass direction. We have north that is facing up. We have our scale, the type of scale that, we, that is used here 
it's a bus game. So that is all the information that we, that we have. Let us look at our questions now. 2.1a, what is the general direction of Middleback from Polokwane? So it means if you are positioned in Polokwane, where is Middleback? Let's look at our, at our compass direction. So if you are in Polokwane, here is Polokwane is your center. This is where you draw your compass. This is okay, this is my north, then this becomes my south, this is my east, this is my, my west. So from Polokwane, where is Middleback? There is Middleback. And Middleback is where it is in south, southeast. So do we all agree that the position, the direction of Middleback from Polokwane is? It's southeast. So we've answered 2.1a. The correct answer there would be south, east. The other person will say east of south. That is correct. As long as you are not saying east, south, but you say east of, of south. Let me write it in full. East of south. But I think to avoid confusion, you can just stick to your, to your southeast because southeast is then the correct answer. B. Describe a detailed set of direction. Mention the directions and route they will take to travel from Polokwane to, to Middleback. And then as you are describing the direction, you must use the national roads. Now let's go back to our map. We want the directions from Polokwane to, to Middleback. So the... So if you are in Polokwane here, we want the direction to go to, to Middleback. I'm making more mess. So from Polokwane to, to Middleback, this is how we are going to travel. Let me see if I can, that is the map again. Oh, sorry. So this is how you would give your directions. For the, for the purpose of time, I'm not going to write the instructions down, but I will just discuss the instructions with you. I hope you are listening. You will say from Polokwane, from Polokwane, Join the N1, or let me write them from Polokwane. And it's very important when you give your instructions, you need to mention your departure point. So from Polokwane, you know, you can't just say join the N1, join the N1 from where? So from Polokwane, join the, N, the N1, join the N1, and then when you reach Mokopani, Mokopani is a town, when you reach Mokopani, When you reach Mukopani, you join the N11. Join the N11 and continue driving on the N11 until you pass your Marble Hall. You will pass your Hoblastal, pass Damval, pass Loskop, and then you still continue with N11. And then the next town that you are going to reach there will be, will be Middleburg. Note that I'm mentioning all the important towns. So let us please not be lazy. When you write the instruction, you mention all the national roads that are important, that all the national roads that you, you are going to pass. You mention them, please. The cities or the towns that you are going to pass, you mention all of them. And then finally, don't forget to mention your arrival point that after you have passed Botshabelo, then you will arrive at, at Middleburg. That is how you should be giving your your instructions, and it needs to be short and straight to the point, please. So I said, um, when you reach Mukopani, when you reach Mukopani, you continue on the N11, join the, you join the N11, and then after you join 11, you will pass Marble, Marble Hall, pass the Marble Hall, and then after Marble Hall, you will pass Hoblas Dal, Plus Hoblas Dal, pass Hoblas Dal. And then after Hoblas Dal, you will pass Damval. And then you continue on the N11. Continue on the N11. And then the next town will be Middleburg.
the next town will be Middleburg. It means you have arrived at your, at your destination. And then that is for five marks. I personally feel that this is actually five marks for free because you, everything that you are writing, you're not thinking of anything. You are writing everything that you see on the map. And that is how you get your, your five marks. And according to this map, there's actually no other route that can be used because the, remember the instruction was that we must mention the national roads. So there's no other route that this person can use where they can pass via the, the national road. So this is the shortest route that they can take. And then you get your five marks then. And this question is also the type of question that is asked in paper, paper two. And remember, we have this belief that paper two is challenging. But if you are getting such a question for five marks, it means you can actually collect some marks on paper two and do well in that paper. Let's see the next question. Oh, that was B. We've answered that for five marks. Let's see the next one now. The activity two is still continuous. Uh, that would be uh, A, write one advantage of using a national road. Remember the national roads are your, your N1s, your N2s, your N3s. And in this uh, instance, they say one advantage. I'm going to repeat this again. If they say one advantage, you only provide one. So the one advantage of using a national, rate, a national road as a driver, one can say it is quicker because there's no, even if there's traffic, but the traffic is able to flow. You don't have any obstructions. There are no traffic lights. There are no stop signs. So the, the road, you, you, you move freely. And if you've been to the national roads, you'll see that the national roads are well maintained. So are, the other learners might say that an advantage is that there are no potholes, which is also correct. Because if there are no potholes, it means your car as a driver is, is protected. So only one advantage. You can say that because it, they, are, they are shorter and quicker to travel on. Or the other person can say because there are no potholes. Or any other reason that is valid. Remember, the reason has to be valid. And then B, use the bus scale on the map to calculate the actual distance that they traveled from Polokwane to Merzelbeck as the crow flies. So remember this sweat as the crow flies. It means they want the straight line distance from Polokwane to, to Merzelbeck. Let's go to our map. Now, when you are working with your bus scale, your first step, before you can answer any questions, your first step, is to measure your bus scale. We are going to measure our bus scale using our millimeters again. And when I measure my bus scale here, I'm getting 110 millimeters. So I have 110 millimeters. It is the one that I measured on the map. So the 110 millimeters on the map is equivalent to what? To 100 kilometers. The 110 is equivalent to 100 kilo. Meters. So this is my bus scale that I'm going to work with. Now I want the distance from the two places. I want the distance from Polokwane to, to Middleburg. I'm going, still going to use my millimeters. So from Polokwane to Middleburg, I'm getting 190 millimeters. So it is 190 millimeters. Remember this section, guys, it represents the distance, the 110 and the 190, it is the distance on the paper, the distance on the map that we measured using our ruler. And then this side, we are going to determine our, our actual distance. Now, let us do our calculations. You will see actual distance equals to, it will be 100 multiplied by, remember you are cross multiplying. It's 190 multiplied by 100 divided by divided by 110. Let me write the units. It's millimeters here, and the 100 here, it is kilometers. The 190, it is millimeters. I'm writing the units because I want to show you that these units, because they are the same, they are going to cancel each other. So it means the answer that we get, whatever answer that we get, it's going to, it's going to be in, in kilo meters because we, that is the only unit that we are left with and now you take out your best friend your calculator you say 100 multiplied by 190 you get the answer and then you divide by 110 
the answer that I'm getting is 172, 172,72 kilometers. What was the instruction? They say you must calculate the actual distance. They didn't say whether the, the distance must be in decimals or to the nearest kilometer. So you can leave your answer as 172,72 kilometers. Because remember, when you read the instruction in your exam paper, it says all answers must be rounded off to two decimal places unless otherwise stated or unless, again, depending again on the context that you are working with. So in this case, you can leave it as 172,72 kilometers. You will still get your full marks or you can uh, round it up to say it is 173 kilometers. And then C, the bus was traveling at an average speed of 120 kilometers per hour. They stopped twice for 20 minutes on each stop. Zinzi claimed that it will take them three hours, 47 minutes to reach Medelbeck. Let me go to the next side. The, sorry, the next page. Remember, I just want to write our distance there. It's 172, comma, let's check, comma 72. Oh, sorry. 172, comma 72 kilometers. That is our answer for B, remember? So see, they say the bus was traveling at an average speed of 120 kilometers per hour, and they stopped twice for 20 minutes on each stop. Zinzi claimed that it will take them three hours, 47 minutes to reach Medelbeck. Verify her claim. This person is claiming that when they are traveling, it's going to take them three hours and 47 minutes. So your job here is to prove whether her claim is valid or, or not. So how are you going to prove that? You are going to prove that by calculating the time that it actually took them to travel from that place to the other at the speed of 120 kilometers per, per hour. So this is where you are going to need your formula, your time, distance, and, and speed. Now, this is what I use. This, um, another thing, learners, this is also a type of a question that you can expect in paper two. Paper two, the examiner does not have to give you the formula. For paper one, it's easy. They will give you the formula. Yours is just to substitute. But for paper two, they expect you to know the formula. When the examiner is being nice, they can give you the formula. Sometimes they can give you the formula of time and then knowing that you need to manipulate the formula and determine then the speed. So let me show you a quick way of um, playing around with that formula of speed, distance, and, and time. Remember, we are working with three things here. You are working with distance, you are working with speed, you are working with with time. So I, t I taught my learners to work with this triangle. And then when you work with this triangle in alphabetical order, D, S, T, which letter comes first? It's D. It means my D is going to be on top here. And then my S and T, you can either put your S here or your T there, it doesn't matter. So how does this help? This helps me that I know that when I want the formula for D, when I want to calculate the distance, I hide this part. I want distance. Distance is what it is, S and T. So my distance is S and T. It means now in between there is multiplication. So if I want to calculate the distance, distance is equals to speed multiplied by time. And if I'm looking for speed, speed is S equals to, it is the D on top and then the T at the bottom. So it means speed is equals to distance over time. And if I'm looking for my time, time is equals to D on top and, sorry, and S at the, at the bottom. And S at the bottom. So if I was calculating time, my formula for time would be distance over speed. So if you can master this triangle, in the exam, you will be ready. It doesn't matter whether they want you to find speed, whether they want you to find time or distance, you will be able to use this um, triangle to help you to get to the answer. So if you know this table, please, I think it's very easy. Your D, S, T, the three of them, the first letter, which is your D, must always be on top. Then the two letters, you can put them in any other way. You will still remember your formula. And then, so yes, this will help you to answer question C. 
because we don't have any more time to continue. But then the key things, we are going to need your formula for time. So you are going to be working with this formula. Time is equal to distance over speed. Remember, you are going to calculate your time and the distance that we are using. We are going to use the distance from the previous question. We are going to use the distance from B, which was 172, 172,72 kilometers over. The speed is given to you. Your speed is 120. And then once you've calculated your time, after getting your time, Remember, you must still add these 20 minutes on each stop. And they stopped for how many minutes? They stopped twice. So if they stop twice, meaning that it is 20 minutes plus 20 minutes, which is equals to 40 minutes. So you, you are going to calculate your time here. After getting your answer, your time, and then on that time, you must add your, your 40 minutes to get your answer. And then you are going to compare the answer that you get if Zinzi's claim was valid or, or not. So if you get 3,47 minutes, then you can say Zinzi's claim was valid. But if you get more than 3,47 or less than 3,47, then you can conclude that her claim was, was invalid. Now, grade 12s, we've come to the end of our lesson. We've come to the end of our lesson. I've really enjoyed this section of maps and scale. I hope you guys also enjoyed and you've learned as well. Now, a quick recap. We've worked with different types of maps. We were using the given map and the compass direction to find the way to destination. We used the given scale to determine the actual map or the distance. We also determined the scale in which the map was drawn by using the scale that was given either a a bar scale or a, or a number scale. And then lastly, guys, uh, please, please, please do practice the questions that involve general direction questions and the questions on a given set of instructions. This is where you are collecting marks. This is an opportunity for you to get the marks. And remember your highlighter in the exam room. Remember your ruler. Remember your calculator. Practice questions on time as well, time, distance, and speed. Know that triangle that I just showed you, memorize it. It will definitely help you in the exam, especially for paper two. And then again, learners, please use this time to study, interact with your teachers and your classmates. And then lastly, use all the sites that are provided to download the material. Stay at home. We, as your teachers, we wish you all the best. We want you guys to do well this year. Do not uh, panic. Keep on working hard. And then you will see you will do well at the end of the year. Thank you.